my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is coming to Kickstarter called Castles by the Sea. This is a two to four player game designed by John Benjamin and Michael Zwerab, and it's published by Brotherwise Games who helped commission this tutorial video. This game we are going to be competing to build castles and avoiding the pitfalls of building castles <laughs> by the sea. And so today we are going to show you how to play it. But before we begin, we do want to mention that the copy that we have is a prototype copy of the game, which means things are subject to change in the final copy, including some of the artwork as well as the graphic design. Now, if you are interested in this game, there will be a link to the campaign down in the description as soon as we have it. Also, if you do like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if it please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for our two player game of Castles by the Sea. Yep. Welcome. To the beach. This is where we're going to be building out our pieces, building out our sand castles, and trying to avoid our three hazards. Yep. As you can see, the board is comprised of several tiles. We are playing with the two-player setup right now. Mm -hmm. The tiles flip for a three-player game, and for a four-player game, you use an entire different set that expands the board quite a bit. And so a two-player game is played over the course of six rounds, as you can see by our round tracker over here. This is dependent on the number of players. If you're playing with three, then it's one less, and four, it's even less. Mm -hmm. And each round, each player is going to take one turn, consisting of gathering sand blocks, placing them out onto the board in order to build out our own personal pieces. Each player starts the game with three of these castle cards, which are basically uh, mid-game objectives that you can try to complete. Mm -hmm. You can only complete two out of the three of the cards in your hand, so just keep that in mind. Now, each round, players are going to have one turn each. And so let's just say I am the starting player. Mm -hmm. The first thing that happens on my turn is I'm going to gather some sand blocks because I need them in order to start building out my structures into onto the beach. Mm -hmm. The base amount of blocks that you get are three. Three blocks, no matter what, minimum. In addition, if I have any pieces that were destroyed in the previous round, then I can gain additional sand blocks for them. One sand block for every two pieces destroyed. Once I'm done gathering my sand blocks, I get to place them out onto the beach board. I do not have to place all three of them. Nope. I can uh, withhold them if I think uh, there's a more powerful thing to do in a future turn. But the main rule here is when you're placing sand blocks out onto the board, every sand block that you place has to have a face that is touching at least one other sand block that you just placed this round. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wanted to, I could build on top of a seaweed token, and there are a few seaweed tokens kind of littered around the beach. And if I do so, then I get to collect the seaweed. And this is going to be worth two points at the end of the game. So all the seaweed tokens are worth two points. Some other rules are you can technically build on top of these stones. That's what these are around the board. Although you still must obey the rules uh, that requires you to have uh, faces touching. So right now I have one block here and one block on top of the stone. This would be illegal right. because I don't have a face that's touching another sand block that I played that turn. That's right. Now once I'm done building for the round, I can choose to place out any number of my player pieces here that I'm allowed to place out. Now you have two main types of pieces. You have figures that you can place out as well as structures. And these are these uh, wooden blocks here. And each piece has specific requirements that need to be met in order to build them out. So let's just start with the princess because I'm actually gonna place the princess out right now. When placing your figures, they all have to be placed on top of a sand block that you just placed in this turn. And so specifically for the princess, the princess has to be placed on a sand block that's at least two blocks high with nothing adjacent to it. So placing my princess out right now would actually not be legal. So had I not built this sand block out mm -hmm. uh, in the previous uh, step, then now this uh, two sand block structure would be a legal placement for me to put out my princess. Right. Because it is at least two sand blocks uh, in height and it is adjacent to nothing else around it. And these requirements are all diagrammed on the cards themselves. The gray transparent blocks means that these only need to be empty during the turn that I place the princess. On a future turn, if I wanted to place this, uh, this sand block here, I could, and it would still be illegal because uh, it's a future round. Mm -hmm. And the card itself also tells you how many points the princess is gonna be worth as long as the princess remains on the board at the end of my turn. So at the end of my turn, I'm gonna get two points for this. And so the other two types of figures that you can build are the archer as well as the guard. Now the archer is different in that they must be placed adjacent to a block. So on a future turn, I can place a sand block, say right here, and then place an archer on top of that because it is now on top of a sand block that I had just placed, mm -hmm. and it's also adjacent to a sand block already. And the guard, on the other hand, is the opposite of the archer. It has to be placed on a sand block with at least one space that has nothing adjacent to the guard, because the guard needs a space to patrol. So say I have two sand blocks, and I were to place them out on a future round, uh, I could place the guard out right on top of this sand block, because it has a sand block adjacent to it that is empty. Now, unlike the figures, 
these three structures require certain spaces adjacent to them to be empty for the rest of the game. Because our structures are a tower, an arch, and a door. So of course you can't have things in front of a door, right? right? Yep. And before we continue, we do want to note that the art on the blocks themselves are not final. These are hand-drawn prototypes. These are prototypes, yes. Now both the arch as well as the door need to be sandwiched in between two different sets of blocks. So both of these require at least two rounds mm -hmm. to build. Yeah, you have to set it up in one round and then finish it off in the next round. Exactly. So let's take the arch, for example. The arch needs to be sandwiched in between two different pillars of sand, which makes making that in one round impossible. Impossible, right? Yep. So say on a future turn, I were to place these two cubes out right there, then I can place my arch right in between the two stacks like that. And that would also get me a seaweed token, by yep, the way. Totally. It scored me two points at the end of the game. The thing about the arch, though, is the spaces in front and behind it must be empty for the rest of the game. And the arch scores you two points at the end of the round. The door is very similar, but the difference is that it's only a gap of one space, and they do not need to be two stacks, mm -hmm. unlike the arch. So that could complete my placement for the door. Yep. And lastly, we have the tower. The tower works a little bit differently. If in a round I were to build out a shape that looked like this, I could place a tower in that corner spot right there because the rule is there must be at least two adjacent sand blocks below the tower that are empty. So we have these two adjacent sand blocks with nothing on top of them, mm -hmm. which makes this tower a legal placement. But again, those empty spots need to be empty for the rest of the game. Now let's rewind and go back to my turn. I did not build out a tower, but I did uh, build out these two cubes right here. So I built a stack leaving one behind on my board. And I technically haven't placed any pieces yet. I'm still in the, the build phase. I think I'm done building for now. So now I move on to the next step, which is placing out the figures, and I will place out the mm -hmm. princess. And of course you do not have Oh yes, <laughs> I'm extra cheating. Now, like we were mentioning earlier, each player also has three castle cards that you can uh, score either during the placement phase or the build phase. Mm -hmm as long as your requirements have been met. Because I was able to place out my princess, I can actually score this card, which is a good ruler. This card allows me to score three points if I only have my princess on the board, which is true. So I would go ahead and place this face up next to my board, and at the end of the game, I'm gonna go ahead and score those three points. Now I did not complete this, but some castle cards also show different uh, configurations of sand blocks. In these cases, you would score these cards immediately after the build phase where this is true. Right. Now after you're done placing all the pieces that you're allowed to place, then you go and you score points. Now because I have the princess out here, I score two points. I would take those in the form of these uh, sand dollars, which I would now keep on my board to score at the end of the game. And this happens at the end of each of your turns, by the way. So if I'm able to leave the princess out onto the board for the rest of the game, I'm gonna be scoring two points for this piece every round. Although, it's not that simple. Because in this game, we also have three pretty scary hazards, right? Yes, there are the terror, we have the giant, as well as the dragon. Yes. And at the start of the game, we're supposed to start with one card of each deck, kind of set out just like this. Because each of these three hazards, when activated, remove pieces from the board in a different way. Now, each hazard starts on a different edge of the board. And so once you're done scoring for your turn, you end your turn by choosing one of these hazards to move clockwise around the board. So if I felt threatened by the giant baby, <laughs> I can move the baby over this way and choose one of the empty spaces to place the token on, just like that. Mm -hmm. Now as for the other hazards, in higher player counts, you choose one of the other two that you did not move to now flip a card from its deck. But because we're playing a two-player game, yep. you have to flip a card from both. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over the terror as well as the dragon. And so at that point, if one or more of the hazards are showing at least three of these alert symbols, then that hazard becomes activated and something bad happens. If it were the terror, which is this uh, friendly happy dog, <laughs> the terror would remove all pieces and sand blocks from the nearest uh, tile that it's adjacent to. Now the giant, represented by this big baby, removes all figures in a column or row. So if there were figures, meaning these wooden pieces here, they would take them all out and go back to that player. Yes, those pieces would be considered destroyed, uh, going back to the player's board at the start of the next round, scoring them less points, but also getting them potentially more sand blocks for the round. That's true. And finally, we have the dragon. And the dragon, when activated, removes all pieces and sand blocks from the same column or row that is higher than two sand blocks tall. So in this example, only this piece would get removed. Any hazards that have activated are then moved clockwise to the next available edge with the exact same symbol. 
So in this example, it would move all the way over here to that spot. And then all of its cards would get shuffled back into the deck. And once the hazard step is finished, then play continues clockwise to the next player. And once the game ends with the final round, then there is one last special round. And during this round, players move one hazard and get to flip over one hazard card from the deck, trying to trigger any uh, potential hazards there. You then collect extra sand blocks for any destroyed pieces doing that and then you get to score your pieces one final time before you go into true end game scoring. And at that point, whoever has the most sand dollar points wins. And ties go to the player who saved the most sand blocks. And there you have it, that is how you play Castles by the Sea. Again, this is a game that is coming to Kickstarter. We'll include the link to the Kickstarter campaign down below once we have it. But until then, if you have any questions about the game or anything that you saw here today, please go ahead and leave a comment down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.